Hi guys, and welcome to the Zaha Numeracy Calculator Allowed 2013 Year 9 NAP Plan. That's a long title. So what I'm going to actually do is going to go through this section by section with my calculator. Now I'm going to give you a quick show of my calculator now. And what you'll notice is that may be way more complicated than the calculator you currently have. If you're using a CAS, awesome. That will make sense if you're using the Texas one, but don't worry about it. The bit you really need to look at is what I'm doing on the screen. So here we go. Let's start with question one. One lap of a park is 3.52 kilometers. How many laps is 16? Or how many kilometers is 16? So I'm just going to do 16 multiplied by 3.52. Hit enter and 56.32. Color in my correct answer. And let's move up. The scale of this map is one centimeter to 300 kilometers. What is the approximate direct distance from Brisbane to Carnarvon? So looking at that, seems to be 13 centimeters. If every one centimeter is 300 kilometers, then I'm gonna do 13 times 300, hit enter, and I get 3,900 kilometers. We'll color in our lozenges. It's really important when you do these things to color in your lozenges or unfortunately it's not going to get the mark because these are really pretty much computer marked. 1.5 times what is 0.6? Well, in fact, if I'm going to do this backwards, I'm going to do 0.6 divided by 1.5 is what? So 0.6 divided by 1.5. Hit enter, gives me 0.4. Color in my lozenge. And moving on. This table shows how many people attended three football games. So we've got a title. Sorry, we've got a table even. So the nearest thousand, what was the total number of people attending the three games? So I suppose the first thing I'm going to do is add all those values together. 5340, whoops. 53403 plus 41470 plus 62845. Hit enter gives me 157,000. 718. Now what's it to the nearest thousand, which means I'm going to want to round to, well this is basically closer to 158,000 than anything else, so I'm going to colour in my 158,000 lozenge. There are six cubes in this 3D puzzle. The puzzle is completely dipped into red paint. When the cubes are separated, how many faces will be red? Whoa! So, first things first, that's going to have five faces simply because there's only going to be one connecting face that's not going to be done. That's going to have, so basically each cube has six faces, and I'm going to try and work out how many faces are covered and take it away. So this cube here has two faces covered, so that's going to be four. This cube here has two faces covered, so that's also going to be, has it got two faces covered? Yeah, so that's also going to be four. You can hear me thinking out loud here. This one here has only got one face covered, so that's going to be five. This cube down the bottom here, how many faces that cover got covered? One, two. So again, that's going to be one, two, three. That's going to be four. And this one here, uh, which you can't see, that one there I'm dealing with now has only got one, two. So it's going to have four. So I'm going to add all those together. Five and five is ten. Four and four is eight. So I'm going to add the two fives together to give me ten. And I've got the four fours, which gives me sixteen. Add those together, it gives me twenty-six. Is that one of my correct answers? It is. There we go, question five. One year ago, Jay was 140 centimeters tall. He is 5% taller now than he was then. How tall is Jay now? Well, I'm gonna find 5% of 140 centimeters. So let's fire up my CAS on my calculator. Five divided by 100 is equal to, I'm gonna times that by 140. So he's seven centimeters taller. And it says, how tall is he now? So I would have to do 140 plus the seven to give me 147 centimeters. Jade buys a smart pad online that costs $319. With its packaging, it weighs 1.6 kilograms. Package cost is shown in the table below. In total, how much does Jade pay for her smart pad and postage? So we've got to take the $319 and then we've got to find out how much is going to cost to post at 1.6 kilos. Well, 1.6 seems to fall in this bit here, so that's $56.75. So again, firing up my cows or using my cows, 319 plus 56.75 gives me $375.75. dollars and 75 cents. 375.75. 
Scrolling up, this hexagon, hexagon is constructed on a grid of six rectangles. Each rectangle measures six by four. What is the area of the hexagon? So the first thing's first, each of the big squares is going to be six times four, which is going to be 24 centimeter squared. So that one there's going to be 24, and that one there's going to be 24. Now, what do I happen to know is this is half of a square here, so that uh, triangle there is half a square, but if I add it to that triangle there, it's going to make a whole square. So each of those added together gives me 24, and that would be the same for that as well. So what I really want to do is 24 times 4, 4 fours is 16, 96 centimetres squared. There we go. Notice I didn't use a calculator for this one. Not everything I do has to use a calculator. Which arrows show the approximate location of root 2 and pi on the number line? Well, again, let's fire up my calculator. I'm going to do the value of pi. And unfortunately, my calculator is being clever. So let's do that properly. 3.14. So pi is approximately 3.14. So I'm reckoning C is my value of pi. That's about 3.1. The square root of 2, again, let's do the square root of 2 and that comes out to be 1.4. So the square root of 2 is approximately 1.4. That gives me B. So in which case we want B and C, which is going to be that answer there. Question number 10. 4.5 million taxpayers gave to charities in 2008. The average donation was $523 per taxpayer. What is the total amount given to charities by these taxpayers in 2008. So I've got to do 4.5 million. So that's 4.5 to the 10 to the power of 6, if that makes any sense, or 4500000. So that, and then I'm going to multiply that by 523. Whew, that's a big number. Let's see what comes out. 4500000 times it by 523 gives me 23535000. So, sheesh. A big number, all right. What is the f this is a floor plan of a room? Okay, what is the sum of the six marked interior angles? Well, we know each of these is 90, so that's 90, that's 90, that's 90, that is 90, and that is 90. Now, this angle here would be 270, so I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five 90s, so 90 times five. Again, do that my calculator, just to make sure I've got my calculator, so I might as well do it. It's 450. I'm going to add the 270, which gives me, let's add 270, gives me 720 degrees. There are 61 guests at a party. There are 17 more men than women. How many women are at the party? So if there's 61 guests at the party and there are 17 more men than women, Ooh, so what we've got is the number of women I'm going to say is x. So let's x be the number of women plus x plus 17. So this basically is the number of women I have. There must be 17 more men, and that's got to be equal to 61. So 2x plus 17 gives me 61. There may be other ways of doing this. So I'm going to bring up my calculator just so I don't make mistakes. 61 minus 17, 44. So I know that two x's are 44, and so x, which is the uh, number of women, is going to be divided by 2 is 22. And let's just check. So if I've got 22 uh, women, and then that would give me 17 more than that would give me 39. Add those together, it does in fact give me the 61. And I'm sure lots of people may have tried that one by trial and error. Okay, I like the idea of algebra. Um, it makes sometimes things a little bit easier. All right, Tim earns $300 in five days. After the first day, he earned $10 more each day, each day than the day before. How much did Tim earn on the first day? Okay, so after the first day, he earned... So let's say he got X on the first day. The next day, he gets X plus 10. The next day, he gets... He earns $10, X plus 20. Then X plus 30. And then X plus... 40, all right? So basically, each day is getting $10 more each day than the day before. All right? So that's going to be the easiest way to do that. And that's got to be equal to 300. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x's plus 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 plus 100 gives me the 300. Take away 100 from both sides gives me 5x 
is equal to 200. And so x is going to be equal to, again, can do this in my head, but why would I if I can just use my calculator? So 200 divided by 5, enter, it gives me $40. All right, so how much did Tim earn on the first day? He earned $40. And again, if you want to check, just add those on. So he would have got $40 on the first day, $50 on the next day, $60 on the next day, $70 on the next day, and $80 on the next day. If we add all those together, 15, 20, that will give me my 300. Mel drives her car a distance of 40 kilometers at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. How long does the drive take? Well, if she does 30 kilometers per hour and she travels 40 kilometers, well, we can use a formula for this. We can say, knowing that speed is equal to distance divided by time, then time becomes equal to distance divided by speed. So the distance she did was 40 divided by the speed of 30. So in which case, again, let's do this. 40 divided by 30 gives me 1.333333 hours. And again, that was the trick. 1.33 hours, right, which is one and a third hours, which is actually one hour and 20 minutes, right? Don't get tricked there. That decimal number after is not the number of minutes. So if you want to know how I would have done this, I would have taken away the one hour to show me how many minutes. And that number you can see being highlighted now is a fraction of an hour. And they're going to times that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And you'll notice it gives me the 20 minutes. This is a map of a park. Goodness gracious me. All right, what does it say? Josh enters the park through one of the gates. He then walked southeast along a path. So let's just draw never eat shredded wheat or soggy wheat mix. I don't know how you'd eat eat a mix if it wasn't soggy, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it'd be nothing worse, but like eating straw. Anyway, so Josh enters the path through one of the gates. He walks southeast along a path. Well, southeast is that way. He walks uh, something along. After 90 meters, he turns right. He then walks another 30 meters and stops. Which point on the map is where Josh stops? So he's entered a gate here. He's gone south. What did he say there? South. East, yep, along the path. So he's there. And then he's turned right, which as far as I'm concerned, would put him there at point D. Gee, what is that testing with maths? No idea. Question 16, a circle has a circumference of 40 centimeters, which is this is closest to the radius. Circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Well, if we got a circumference of 40 is equal to pi times diameter, so I'm now going to say my diameter is 40 divided by pi. So once again, firing up my CAS calculator, I'm going to do 40 divided by pi. Hit enter. Now that's my diameter. So my diameter would be 12.73. If I then divide that by 2, that's my radius. So therefore my radius is 6.37 or 6.4. So there's my answer of 3. 6.4, he says with a lisp for some random reason. This table shows the mass of barley is related to its volume. Flick heck. A silo contains 105 cubic meters of barley. How many tons of barley are in the silo? Wow, all right, so what I now know is, assuming that I've got, so what is 105? I know that I, this is a ratio question. So 50 for my volume and my mass is 30. So if I divide both sides by 50, then I'm going to end up with, again, put my calculator on, what have we got? 30 divided by 50 gives me 0 0.6. So what that tells me is for every cubic meter, for every one cubic meter of barley, I have 0 0.6 tons of, or its mass is 0 0.6 tons, or uh, I don't quite know what I'm trying to say there. So what I'm saying is now, if I've got 105 cubic meters of barley, so I've now got 105. I've times that by 105, so I'm going to do the same here. So 0 0.6 times 105 gives me 63 tons. Color that in, and we are good to go. All right, this diagram here is a Saturn V rocket, not Saturn V. Stage one of the rocket was 42 meters in length. So stage one was 42 
meters in length. Which of these is closest to the length of stage one as a percentage of the total length of the rocket? So basically we've got 42 for stage one divided by 101.6. And if I want to turn that into a percentage, I times by 100. So I bring up my calculator and I've covered my uh, question there, but I'll bring it back in a moment. 42 divided by 101.6, uh, he says, let's try that again. 42 divided by 101.6, and times that by 100, gives me roughly 41%. So if I turn that off, that's approximately 41.3%. And because it wants it, which is it closest to, it would be 41%. 19, a group of 200 year nine students were asked which activity they spent most time doing after school. The table shows the results. Me would be sleeping. One of these students is chosen at random. What is the probability that the student spends the most time doing music practice? So we select the number of students who do uh, music practice and divide it by how many there were in total. And again, put that into my calculator. So I'm gonna get 40 divided by 200 gives me 0.2 as my correct answer. Okay, so when you're doing probability, you do the percentage of or the number of people you're looking at, which in this situation is music practice, and then you divide it by how many there are, which in this situation was 200. Mia shoots an arrow into the air. This graph shows the height of the arrow above ground level for the time that the arrow is in the air. Okie dokie. For how long is the arrow at a height of more than two meters above the ground. So what I'm actually gonna do is draw a horizontal line as accurately as I possibly can. And then I'm going to read off. So everything above that line means that the arrow is above. So let me see, what have I got here? We've got each of these little bits. Well, how much does each of these little bits stand for? We've got one, two, three, four, five gaps. For, for one second. So that means that each of those is 0 0.2 seconds. So let me see, we're gonna go from here all the way to here. So that is from 0. Point, interestingly, that number there is 0 0.2. This number here would be 3.2468, 3.8. So we're gonna take 3.8 minus 0 0.2, which will give me 3.6 seconds. Again, that one didn't actually need a calculator. Question 21, a cube of side length two centimeters is glued onto the top corner of a cube of side length four. So that's four and four, and that's two and two. What is the surface area of the new object? Wow. So what I tend to do here is work out the surface area of each of the cubes, and then realize that when they're stuck together, I'm gonna to have to take away that area twice, if that makes any sense. So let's do it with a big box first, or the big cube first. We know it was four, by four by four. We don't want the volume, we want the surface area. So the area of one of those faces is 16 because it's four times four. And how many faces have I got? I've got six faces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So 16 times by six. And I won't put my cars up for that, my calculator for that, just because I don't want to obscure. So that's going to give me 96 centimeters squared. Now I'm going to do the same for the little one. This square here or that side there is going to be two by two, by two which is four. And again, I would normally have six faces. So that's gonna give me six, 12, 18, 24 centimeters squared. Now, we've gotta be careful because the bottom of this cube, the bit I'm currently shading in, is actually obscuring both the bottom of the small box and the top of the big box. So we know that the bottom of that area there is four, but I've got to double it because it's covering up two parts of the thing. So I'm actually going to subtract eight. So I'm gonna do 96 plus 24, which is gonna give me 120, but I gotta subtract the eight centimeters, which is hidden, to give me 112 centimeters squared. Hopefully that made sense to you. The table shows attendance at a concert over four nights. The cost of each ticket is 20 bucks. What was the average amount of money collected from ticket sales per night okay the average amount well the first thing i'm going to do is actually work out the average number of people and um, that's going to be easier so i'm going to work out 310 i'm going to add on to that 390 add on to that 380 add on to that 420 
and then I'm going to divide that. So that's the total number of people I had. Divide that by four it gives me the average number of people. So the average number of people was 375, which I can now multiply by $20. So let's do multiply by $20. It gives me $7,500. The list shows the heights of 10 students in centimeters. What is the range of the height? Well, the range is the biggest one minus the smallest one. So let's see what the biggest one is. I've got 173, 175, 180. I think 180 is my biggest value there. No, it isn't. All oh, I've got owned, it's actually 182. Is that my biggest value? Yep. What's my smallest value? 158, 150. 150, I think, is my smallest value. So let's just check. There's nothing smaller than 150. Nope. All right, so in which case, I'm going to do 182 minus 150, which should give me 32 centimeters. Hmm. Alex spends 85% of his money on a surfboard, and the surfboard cost $340. How much money did Alex have left after he... Oh, she shows. The first thing you've got to work out. So 85% of the money he started with, all right, was $340. So what I'm now going to do is I know that that is basically the same as 85 on 100 times, let's do question mark, is 340. So question mark is 340 divided by 0 0.85. And if you wonder where 0 0.85 is, put that into your calculator and that's what's going to come out. So Put my calculator up for a moment. Let's see what happens. 340 divided by 0 0.85. Hit it. Oh, try that one again. 340 divided by 0 0.85. Hit enter. I get $400. And that's not my answer. Remember, that's how much he started with. He spent $340 on the surfboard. And so he would have left $60. All right, and again, that was more a trick of language than it was of math. It was a bit of math. How much money did Alex have left? Okay, yep. Question number 25, the scale drawing shows a footbridge crossing over a road. The width of the road is seven meters. Okay, thank you very much. What is the width of the footbridge? Well, again, we've got one, two, three, four, five squares. So seven meters is equal to five squares. So I can divide both sides by five to tell me what one square is. So seven divided by five by five gives me 1.4. So each square is 1.4 meters. The width of the footbridge, well the footbridge is basically two squares wide. So it's gonna be giving me 2.8 meters. 2.8 meters for that question there. Great. Question 26. The total mass of two bacteria is 5.4 times 10 to the minus 12. The mass of one of them is that. What is the mass of the other? Well, this is basically where you've got to use your CAS or your calculator to take away standard form number. All right. So um, how are we going to do this on my calculator? Let's see whether we can do this. So basically, you've got to take these two values away. I'm going to do 5.4 uh, times... Now I have a 10 to the power of, um, the total mass of two vectors is minus 12. And I'm going to subtract from that 4 times 10 to the power of minus 13. When I get that, I get this 5e minus 12. Now that e minus 12 is just basically telling me it's 5 times 10 to the minus 12. This E basically stands for the times 10. It doesn't know how to say it otherwise. So I'm looking for 5 times 10 to the minus 12. There is my answer there. So again, that question was more about do you know how to use your CAS than anything else or your calculator. All of the triangles in this pattern are similar. All right, cool. The bottom side of the smallest, the bottom sides of the smallest and largest triangles form a straight line. What is the size of the angle marked A? Oh, okay. So this angle here, and that angle there, and that angle there, and that angle there, and that angle there are actually all going to be exactly the same size. Doesn't matter how big the triangle gets, the angles will always stay the same size, as long as they're similar. So I've got one, two, three, four, five triangles together across a straight line that makes 180 degrees. So I'm going to do 180 degrees divided by five. Again, not doing that one on 
bring it up is 36 degrees. Well, if this angle here is 36 degrees and that angle there is 90 degrees, then if I do 90 or 180 minus 90 minus 36, it gives me this angle here of 53 degrees. Right, so again, a similar triangles just means the triangles are, are, they look bigger. The sides are longer, but the angles do not change in a similar triangle, right? They stay the same, doesn't matter how big it looks. Nick stack shopping trolleys. A stack of three trolleys has a length of 180 centimeters. A stack of seven trolleys has a length of 340 centimeters. What is the length of a similar stack of 10 trolleys? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first thing I'm just gonna check to make sure this makes sense. Three, a ratio of 180, so one gives me a ratio of 60. So if I've got seven, seven times six, gives me, pardon, just bear with me guys, uh, do, 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 divide by three, six, 12, 18, right? Seven times six is 42, isn't it? Seven, 36, 42, and that doesn't make 340. Okay, so for every four, trolleys I'm adding on, so let's do that one. So we're now looking at it in a different way, that didn't work. So for every four trolleys I'm adding on, it's giving me an additional 340 minus 180. So 340 minus 180 gives me 160. And so in which case, every one additional trolley gives me um, 40 centimeters. So if I'm adding on three more trolley, if I'm going from seven trolleys to 10, I'm doing three lots of 40, 48, which is 120 centimeters, and thereby I'm going to do 340 plus 120, which gives me 460 centimeters. I'm suggesting that's my right answer. My goodness, this paper goes on and on and on. When does it end? Question 29, the mass of a wedge-tailed eagle is 5.76 kilos, and its wingspan is 2.32 meters. A rule that can be used to approximately predict the wingspan of an eagle from its mass is wingspan is equal to the square root of its mass. Okay, where W is the wingspan in meters and M is the mass in kilos. What is the difference in centimeters between the eagle's actual wingspan and that predicted? All right, so the predicted wingspan is gonna be the square root of 5.76. Bring up my calculator. Let's do the square root of 5.76 gives me 2.4, that's the predicted. Now it wants the difference between the, uh, the eagle's actual wingspan, so we know the actual wingspan is 2.32, minus the predicted rule of 2.4. Um, now that's interesting, because that's gonna give me a negative value, right? So in which case, it's not gonna make sense to do it that way, we're gonna do 2.4 minus 2.32, and what are we going to get? 2.4 minus 2.32 gives me 0 0.08 meters. <laughs> 0 0.08 meters. And we need to be careful because it wants the answer in centimeters. So I'm going to times that by 100. He says adding 100. I'm going to times that by 100 to give me 8 centimeters. Oh, almost tricked there. Question number 30. The diagram shows the range of travel times between five places labeled A to E. The times are shown in minutes. What is the shortest possible travel time from A to E? All right, so first things first, I'm going to, this isn't a particularly interesting, just nice question. So the first thing is the shortest time to get to there is gonna be between 14 and 20 minutes. The diagram shows the range of travel times. 14 and 20 minutes, then what? Uh, eight minutes between C and D. So we go to A to E, so 14, so 16 and 20, what, it's gonna be 40. If I were to go now here, what am I gonna end up with? Well, I'm gonna end up with 14 and eight and 15 which is gonna give me 29, 37, 37 minutes. Can I do this in a quicker way? Let's try a different way then. Let's go 16 and five, 
which is going to be 21 and 15. So 21 and 15, what a horrible, horrible color to choose. Why did I do that? And that's going to give me, so 16 and 5 gives me 21, 31, 36 minutes. And in fact, I don't think I'm going to get any quicker than that. So 36 minutes. With this question here, guys, for those of you who are wondering, did I know how to do that? No, it's going to be trial and error. And I suppose at the end of the day, we wanted to try and get that five minutes in some way. Hopefully this is the last page of this. Hopefully this is the last page. Ali made a rectangular prism by joining two identical cubes together. The volume of the prism is 868 cubic centimeters. What is the height of the prism? Okay, so what I'm going to call it, that's going to be x, that's going to be x, and that's going to be 2x. So I now know my volume is x times x times 2x, and that's going to give me 686 centimeters. If you don't know the length of a side, then obviously you are going to use a letter. Now, because it's a cube, I know that I can call that length x, which means that length is x, and that length there is x, and that length there is x. So if I multiply all that together, I get 2x cubed. So I get 2x cubed is equal to 686. Divide both sides by 2 gives me 343. And then, my apologies, my calculator is still on there. And then going to do the cube root. And again, your button may look slightly different from this, but that is going to give me x is equal to 7. And so, turning my calculator off there, we know that the height of the prism is 7 centimeters. In this pattern of squares, each smaller square is half the area of the next biggest square. <laughs> What is the area of the gray part of the pattern? What is the area of, in this pattern of squares, each smaller square is half the area of the next biggest square. What is the area of the gray part of the pattern? Okie dokie, let's try and work. Okie dokie, let's see what we can come up with. So I know this big square here is going to be 20 times 20, which is going to give me 400. So the big square is 400. The next one is going to have half the area. It's going to be 200. So that's this one here is going to be 200. The one inside of that is going to be 100. So this one here is going to be 100. Now, that now can tell me the area of this section here. Okay, The area of that section there is going to be the 200 minus the 100, which is going to give me 100. All right? So what's the area of this one here going to be? Well, we should know that it's going to be half of that 100, which is going to be 50. I'm going to add that on, and it's going to give me 150 square millimeters, 400. 200, 150, and there we go. That's the answers to the calculator question. Hopefully you found that useful. There are lots more resources for when you travel through maths at mathsguru.com. Thanks very much for taking your time to watch. Just leave me a comment below if you found it useful. Otherwise, I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys.